all right welcome back now in this particular session and the video what we are going to look at is uh, selenium java maven which is a cucumber setup and a test now in this video what we are going to look at is programming language java selenium as an automation test tool cucumber as an automation test framework maven as a build tool for java and intellij is our id which is integrated development environment now let's proceed what i have done is uh, i have tried to bring this video from scratch as in what we will be doing is everything from scratch that's why i had to come up with this whole stepwise approach wherein we will do this step by step and then we will proceed with uh, our um, test automation framework setup as such now first step is installation of intellij which is the id in your local machine step number two is verify java in local machine and if required install it and then setting up system variable and environment variables step number three is verify maven in your local machine and if required you require to install it if it's not there okay step number four is create a maven project and add the cucumber plugin after creating the maven project Step number five is install Cucumber dependency in your POM file. Step number six is add Selenium WebDriver dependency in your POM file and install and add Chrome WebDriver in the project as such. Step number seven is add one test of the application under test and run the test. So we have an application under test which is live application. I'll be providing all the links in this particular video and I'll just give an quick understanding about the test scenario that we are going to test which is under under our application under test and then we'll use selenium with the cucumber setup of maven so that we will be able to perform the test on the application under test as such all right let's proceed with the first step which is installation of id which is integrated development environment in our local machine now for this to happen, you can open up a browser in Google or whichever browser that you are using and just type here as IntelliJ. Uh, either you can do as IntelliJ download or you can just search for IntelliJ as such in your Google Chrome browser. The first thing which comes up is the JetBrains link. So JetBrains is a company which uh, provides IntelliJ uh, idea as such. And I'll just click on the first link. And the moment I do that, you can see the page which is opening up for the IntelliJ idea. And, and once this page opens up, uh, it shows the IntelliJ idea ultimate. Now, please note that you are getting only the 30 days trial over here, which is IntelliJ idea ultimate. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, you can see the community edition. Now, we are interested in the community edition. We don't want the ultimate version yet. Community edition is free of cost. It's given by JetBrains as such so that all the developers can use it. And uh, generally go for community edition. Now there is a download button over here. Click on that. And the moment you do that, you'll be getting an indication that it's getting downloaded as an IntelliJ idea in your machine. Now the download has started. Make sure that the download has got completed and set up the installation as per the .exe file that you have. Uh, you can get a default path where it's really getting downloaded, the IntelliJ as such. And then you can set up the default path uh, where it's really getting installed. Once the installation is done in your machine, please come to your search button and make sure that IntelliJ is really up in, appearing in your local machine. Now, if you are not able to uh, open up IntelliJ in your machine, then we will not be able to proceed with the tutorial as such. But if you have already done this step of installation, download and installation, then please open up IntelliJ in your machine and then just verify that it's you can really proceed with your uh, test setup as such. All right, so once the download is completed and the installation is done in your machine, what you will be able to see is you can go to search button in your machine and you can just search here as IntelliJ 
and you will be able to see that IntelliJ IDEA after the installation. This is something which will open up for you. And in my case, what I've really done is IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition of 2022 is installed in my machine. Okay, so it could be different from what you are having based on at what time you have installed it. It could be an older version, but the latest version at this point of time is 2022. That's why I have got it installed in my machine. So I'll just click on IntelliJ IDEA and IntelliJ IDEA will open up in my machine. So this is something which will open up. And uh, now we are what we are going to do is we are going to create a new project as such. But before that, what we need to do specifically is just to verify that Java is really installed in your machine and it's whether the environment variables for Java is really set up in your machine. So uh, we'll proceed to our second step. So I'll just move on to the second step, which is a prerequisite. Now, step number two is verify Java in local machine. And if it is not there, then you have to install it. Okay, and then we'll be setting up the system and the environment variables. So for that, to verify that the Java is really set up in your local machine, what you need to do is you go to the search bar in your machine and just type over here as command prompt. This is something which will open up. Just click on that. And the command prompt will get opened up. By default, it might be leading to your user page as such or the user path what you need to do over here is a simple command which is java hyphen version and you can press enter on your keyboard and i have already installed java in my machine okay so that's the reason i'm able to see java version which is 11.0.1 .1 in my machine this is what is appearing now in case there is no Java in your machine, you will get an error. You will not you will not get a Java version. Now for that, if you have error encountered error over here, what you need to do is you need to go into a browser and just type over here as Java download and press enter over here. And the moment you do that, you'll be able to see there are different links for Java download as such, and you can select one of them now what i am doing is i'm going to oracle um, link over here and i'm clicking on the java downloads and over here there is an indication okay there is java 20 and java 17 available but those are very high versions as such i'm not going for that what i'm going to go with is the java 11 version and java 11 version at this point of time is very stable so i'll just scroll down a little bit and there is versions of Java 8, Java 11. Now the just for demonstration purpose, what I'm doing is I'm just clicking on Java 11 and there are different download packages. So in this tutorial, what I'm doing is I'm using Windows and I'll be looking at uh, 64 installer. What I can really do is I can click on this and the moment I do that, uh, it will get downloaded in my machine. Okay, so just for demonstration, what I'm doing is I'm clicking on this uh, link and over here it will give an indication okay there is uh, some accept of um, uh, agreement you just have to click on the checkbox and click on download now once the java has been downloaded in your machine you will be able to see something like this in your machine which is jdk 11 uh, point zero point one nine if you have installed uh, Java 11 now in this tutorial I'm using JDK 11 that's the reason it is showing over here so what I did is I went into downloads folder in my local machine and I looked at JDK version over here now please note uh, this is the JDK version now I will right click I and I can click on the properties and the properties it's showing is it is currently in the location of downloads okay now uh, what i can do is i can double click on this and i'll be able to proceed with the installation of java in my machine okay so this is what i will do i'll just click on double click on this dot exe file and then i'll proceed with the installation now what i request for my students is kindly perform this installation in your machine once you have performed installation in your machine, what you can do is you can go to the C drive 
on your machine and then you can go to program files and over there in program files path you will be able to see java folder over here and once you come to java folder you can see that there is a jdk-11 folder that has been created after installation okay if you double click on it you'll be able to see there are certain folders over here which is bin conf include jmods legal lib so these are the java files that has been installed in your machine please note about the bin folder where exactly is this really placed so you will get a path over here which is c program files java jdk-11 bin folder okay this is important because uh, you need to set up the system variables in your machine for java by default windows doesn't recognize java or the system variables are not set but please make sure after you have installed java in your machine you have to go back and you have to set up the system variables okay i'll show that now what you need to do is after installation you have to type over here as in the search button which is system variables and the moment you do that you will be able to get a box like this which is edit system vari environment variables it's a control panel under which there's a system variable that you can really edit i'll click on this and something like this will get opened up which is system properties okay now there is a button over here which is environment variables i'll just click on that and the moment i do that there are two areas that i have to fill uh, populate one is the environment variables another is a system variable now the environment variable itself has a variable which is path and under that there is a value and uh, in the system variables uh, there will be different variables as such now let's take step by step we have to first make sure the environment variable is set or not now what you need to do is you need to click on this path variable and you need to click on edit and over here you need to provide the path where exactly is your bin folder okay now looking at over here it is under c drive it's under program files it is under java it's under jdk-11 and up to jdk-11 where exactly is your bin is what you need to provide in your path over here okay so once that is set up um, and please note i have already set up in this machine and i am just showing this for demonstration purpose so that my students also get this done uh, if it's not already there in their machine so please note about this path and please match it with where exactly is your java bin folder okay so once that is done click on ok that is the environment variable is set up now what you need to do is set up your system variables okay now over here what i have done is i have already entered a variable which is java underscore home okay this is very important please go to your machine and open up the system variables in your machine and please note that you have to set up this java underscore home now if it is not there what you need to do is you need to click on this particular new and you have to provide this variable name which is java underscore home and please do note it has to be capital exactly same like this java underscore home and you have to give the variable value okay so variable value is the path again is path so please note your path is c drive program files java jdk bin okay now this particular path you have to give uh, only up to jdk not the bin as such once you have done uh, once you have clicked on ok you will get something like this which is java underscore home c drive program files java jdk hyphen 11 okay so this path will get created uh, once you create it now once you have set up the path as well as java underscore home over here just click on ok and it will give an indication whether you want to apply or not apply please if you're getting a confirmation something like that please make sure that you click on apply and make sure that the changes are already applied to the system variables and the environment variables okay now once that is done what you need to do is you need to come to your command prompt back 
and then you have to type over here as java hyphen version and then you will be able to see that there is a java version in your machine now please note that if this does not really apply that is a java version is not really coming in your machine please restart your machine sometimes what it happens is a uh, machine really did, does not detect the environment variables or the system variables if that is the case please restart your machine and then come to command prompt and retry this command which is java hyphen version and you should be able to get java version in your machine as such all right now let's proceed with our step number three which is maven installation so if we look at our uh, path this is the step number three which is prerequisite verify maven in your local machine and if it is not there you have to install it and similar to what we did for java we have to set up the system variables and the environment variables for maven as well now let's proceed with this uh, what i will do is i'll go back to command prompt and over here i will type a simple command which is mvn hyphen space hyphen version and the moment i do that press enter on my keyboard you will be able to see that there is an apache maven which is 3.9.1 available in this particular machine now if you are getting an error other than apache maven if you are getting that one what you need to do is you have to install apache maven in your machine okay now for this what we will do is we will go to browser uh, google chrome browser or whichever your, is your favorite browser and you can type over here is maven download okay but the moment you search for maven download in your google you will be able to see that there is an apache maven available now you can click on download apache maven and the moment you do that you will be able to see the current um, version of the apache at this point of time is 3.9.3 and uh, what i'll do is i'll just scroll down now there is a, a link over here which is apache maven 3.9.3 hyphen bean dot zip now you can click on this particular link or if you want to have a different version what you really can do is you can scroll down and you can look at the maven releases history and over here you can look at different versions of uh, maven that is uh, present and you can go for uh, announcement or release note or reference document and you can get it installed now it is very not that important that you look for a version so what i will go do is i'll go back and i'll just look for something like this which is a binary zip archive and there is an apache maven 3.9.3 hyphen bin dot zip i just click on this link and get it installed now there is a particular this particular page gives some more information like what is a jdk that is a java java development kit uh, wherein which com which is com which maven is really compatible with a jdk now over here it is given as maven 3.9 plus requires jdk 8 or about to execute now we are okay in this case because what we have done is we have got jdk that is java development kit of 11 uh, in our machine and hence we can proceed with 3.9 version uh, whatever is available uh, more than 3.9 we can go for it okay so once you click on this link you'll be able to uh, download the maven into your machine now the moment you click on this you, you might have noticed that this particular download has got completed now what i will do is i'll go to the downloads folder and search for this apache maven in my downloads folder all right now once i come to my downloads folder you can see that the maven has got downloaded in uh, my machine so you can see that i had already downloaded 3.9.1 3.9.2 3.9.3 which i just downloaded now few minutes back and uh, uh, once i have got this downloaded what i will go do is i'll um, right click and perform the extract all so that the folder gets created under apache maven as such 
Now, once the Apache Maven unzip or the extraction has really happened, uh, we have to understand what, where exactly is this particular bin folder or this folder that has got created. Now, please note, this is under downloads folder and what you can do is you can either move this file to somewhere or you can use it under downloads folder. It's up to you. It's your choice. Now, what I'll do is I'll go back to system variables. For that, what I'll do is I'll just search over here as edit system variables. I'll go back to system variables and this particular pop-up will come, which is environment or system properties as such. As such. I just click on environment variables and uh, once the environment variable pop-up opens up, there is a path over here which we looked previously for setting up Java specifically, Java path. Now over here, I will just click on edit the path as such. And please note, this is exactly what we will have to enter into the environment variable. Now I have already set it up percentage maven underscore home percentage and then I'm giving the bin folder as such. And please note that this environment variable is exactly under maven underscore home. Okay, so once please enter this particular environment variable in your environment variable as such and click on OK. After that, what you have to do is you have to set up a maven underscore home here as a system variable. Okay, now I have already set up. I'm just showing this as a demonstration. Now, what I will do is I'll show you how I have set up maven underscore system variable in my machine. Okay, so what I have done is I have set up the variable path which is under downloads, which is this path. And then there is an Apache Maven uh, bin hyphen bin. And then there is an Apache Maven hyphen 3.9.1. So I've given the whole path of the Apache Maven and there is a Maven underscore home, uh, which is system variable. Okay. So this particular variable name which is set up in the system variable is exactly what I am passing to the environment variable. So please note that it is very important. This is the, the path exactly where is your Apache Maven bin. So we are not installing Maven as such anywhere. What we are really doing is we are just giving the system variable path over here, which we have set up in this case. and um, this particular system variable once it's entered over here you can see that the environment variable is exactly this maven home and if we see over here that there is a maven home setup so once you have downloaded maven in your machine please note the properties uh, where exactly is your path once that is understood then you can set up this maven underscore home as well as this path over here. Now, some of my questions, uh, students were asking till what is your path setup? The path exactly is Apache maven 3.9.1 hyphen bin and Apache maven as such. Now I will just open up the folder, which is underscore, which is the folder un of Apache in my machine. Now there is Apache hyphen maven hyphen 3.9.1 hyphen bin I just double click on this and if you note there is a fo another folder over here which is Apache hyphen maven hyphen 9.1 so the path of this folder is what I am specifying in my system variable over here and once this is done you can close this particular environment variable system properties folder you can come back to command prompt and then run this small command which I showed previously that is MVN and then hyphen version in this machine and then you will get a message over here which is Apache Maven 3.9.1 and please note if you are not getting this one uh, and if you are getting the error again what you can do is restart your machine and then you, sometimes what happens is system variables or the environment variables really does not get picked up 
and uh, the restart of the machine helps uh, once that is done and then you can verify re-verify command to come to command prompt and then re-verify that uh, the MVN version is really working and then Apache uh, Maven version is really ap appearing over here so uh, once Java as well as Apache has been set up in your machine we are done with step number one two and three and then we'll be looking at creating the maven project and adding the cucumber de dependency next all right now we will be looking at the step number four which is to create a maven project and add a cucumber dependency as well now for this uh, what we'll be doing is now we have already installed intellij in our machine we will go to search bar in our uh, machine and then we will search here as intellij idea community edition and i'll just click on that and intellij idea will get opened up we'll click on the new project and this is what uh, opens up now in the new project um, uh, pop-up as you can see there is a new project uh, button over here and uh, you can see that uh, there is a location default location there is a name so we'll set a name over here which is uh, selenium cucumber test and uh, this will be our project name and uh, i will select build system as maven and then you can just check that there is a jdk uh, version that is being required to enter in the intellij now uh, this gets auto detected in IntelliJ as you can see that uh, we like I had a JDK 11 in my machine at this particular path but if you are not able to uh, see this happening in your machine or in your IntelliJ what you can do is you can click on add JDK and give the path where exactly is your Java uh, it got installed okay so uh, once that is done you can see that the 11 version 11.0 whatever version you have it will appear over in the jdk version now it is very important that you select maven over here in the build system and the language is java and you enter the name as well which is your project's name and then you can click on create the moment you do uh, create in your uh, uh, and you create the project as such what you will be able to see is that the project is gets created very quickly and uh, there if you come to this project section over here you can see that uh, there are um, uh, folders like source that which is got created there is a main folder and under that uh, there is a java folder and there is a resource folder and there is a test folder which has also got created and over here there is uh, a main uh, which is a method that has got created and there is a pom file now pom file is very important and uh, pom file is very uh, exactly where your uh, project object model or um, what all dependencies you need to, to get added in your project get, can be get added into this pom.xml file as such all right now what i will do is i'll now I'll change the appearance of the IntelliJ a little bit so that my viewers viewers can really have a look at what I'm typing in my project. So I'll go to files, I'll go to settings and over here there's a, a appearance and behavior coming over here. So I'll just click on appearance and the theme that I'll select is IntelliJ Lite and then I'll just click on OK. Uh, all right, now this is how the project looks like and as you can see that there is a source folder there is a main folder there is java folder and and there is a resource folder and there is a test folder which comes under source folder as such all right now what we'll be doing is we will add the cucumber dependency inside the maven project as such now for that what we'll be doing is we'll go to uh, google chrome over here and then we will open up a tab and search for maven repository and the moment we search for it the first link that you get is a maven repository over here once you type uh, cucumber here you'll be pressing enter and then you'll be able to see that there is a cucumber jvm which is a java virtual 
machine. JVM is a full form, uh, is a abbreviation for Java Virtual Machine. Now over here, I'll just click on this. And there is a um, uh, seven version of Java um, of Cucumber as such. But I'll scroll down a little bit. I'll select something which is of 7.0.0. I'll select this one. And I'll select a dependency over here and copy this dependency and go back to my project. And I need to add a, a tag of dependencies. So I'll just type over here as dependencies and create a tag for dependency. And then I'll just copy my dependency here in the Cucumber. Now, the moment I do that, you can see that there is a red error coming over here and which means that the Cucumber, though we have added the dependency over here, it has not really picked it up. For this, what we need to do is, as you can see over here, there is load maven changes. Now, the top right corner over here, there is load maven changes. Now, I'll just click on it so that it gets synced up. And as you can see that the syncing is happening and the download is happening as well. Uh, and there will be a indexing happening as well. Okay, so once that is done, you can see that uh, the error is gone. The Cucumber is really uh, reflecting as a dependency over there. And apart from that, what we need to do is we need to add the J unit as well. Okay, so for this, what we'll be doing is uh, we'll just go back to uh, Maven uh, repository. And over here, you can see that Cucumber JVM, which is J, J unit is also present. Okay, so I'll just click on this and uh, I'll select uh, uh, the version, which is 1.2.1, um, and I'll select the J unit from here. So I'll just copy this particular uh, dependency and go back to my project and add this dependency as well, which is a Cucumber J unit uh, dependency. Now, again, the error has come. Now, what I'll do is I'll come here as a load maven changes. I'll just click on that and the sync will happen. And once the sync is done, you can see the Cucumber uh, J unit and Cucumber Java both are present right now in my POM file. And I can start uh, creating the Cucumber test as such. Okay, now uh, one important thing which I wanted to specifically mention is um, uh, when we are designing our test cases, okay, there will be a lot of folders that we are creating. Now, it is very important that we I uh, really design those folders properly because once the test starts it is important that we specifically look for these uh, folders and try to create this uh, tests and be maintainable or scalable test as such uh, from automation perspective now what i will do is i'll go back to the diagram where i was showing that uh, we will uh, perform the step number four so we have perform the step number four, which is Maven project and add Cucumber dependency. The step number four is complete. Now we'll be looking at five, which is install Cucumber dependency. Okay. Now this is also done. As you can see, what we have done is we have um, added the Cucumber dependency over here in POM file and we are ready to start with our test cases. Before that, um, what we were supposed to do is we were supposed to add the Selenium web driver dependency. Now let's add that as well. Now what I will do is I'll go back to the Maven repository. Now, uh, as you can see, the Maven repository is already open. Now over here, I'll just type here as Selenium. And uh, as you can see that there is a Selenium Java, which is present over here. Now I'll just click on Selenium Java. And there are four, uh, there are um, uh, versions of four as well as three present and latest is a four version. I'll select a kind of stable um, version of Selenium and I'll just copy this particular dependency. And then come back to my IntelliJ and enter the dependency over here. I'll just paste the dependency and Yes, you guessed it right. The next step is to load Maven changes. I'll just click on the load Maven changes and the dependencies will get loaded into my IntelliJ project as such. All right. Now, um, as 
our selenium dependency is also added now you can see that there is a plugin that we are supposed to add for cucumber java now um, there is a suggestion that IntelliJ is giving me that please add suggested plugin is cucumber for java available dependency now i'll just go to configure plugins i can click on this button or what i can do is i can go to file and from here i'll go to settings and from here i'll go to plugins and from plugins i can add cucumber over here okay now i'll just search in marketplace as cucumber and from there i can get some combinations of cucumber for java and then cucumber plus i'll go for cucumber for java i'll click on install and the moment i do that um, install button you can see that the cucumber for java plugin requires jerkin now uh, jerkin is also important that we need to install now i'll click on install and the moment I do that, the installation has started and it's indication indicating me to restart ID. Now I'll restart the ID. That is this whole IntelliJ will get restarted. I'll just click on restart ID and it is prompting me restart ID, apply changes to plugins. I'll just say yes, click on restart. And the moment I do that, the restart the IntelliJ itself will get closed and then it will get reopened again so it's getting loaded and my project is getting loaded now the plugin has been added and there will be some indexing happening and after that we will be able to see that the plugin has added now just to make uh, sure that the plugin has been really added what i'll do is i'll go to file i'll go to settings I'll go to plugins and after plugins I'll go to installed and as you can see there are different plugins that I've already installed and jerkin is one of them and then cucumber for java is one of them okay um, so it is already installed in this particular machine as well as it's ready to uh, proceed with the cucumber and jerkin languages as well okay all right i'll close this button and how we will design the test is under the source there is a folder which is test and then there is a java folder over here in this java folder it is important that we pro properly design our test cases okay now it is very important uh, now what we will be doing is i'll just create some folders over here i'll just right click on this folder of test and then i'll go to new and then i'll create a folder which is package and over here i'll enter as features and then i'll add another folder which is called pages and then i will add one one more folder which is runner and then i'll add another folder which is step definition so i'll create this as step definition and i'll create one more folder which is utilities So let this be utility. Uh, so you can see that I have created different folders all together and one is features, another is pages. One is first is the features, second is pages, third is runner, the fourth is step definition and fifth is a utility. Now uh, there is resources folder also required in test. So what I'll do is under test, I'll create right click and then uh, go to new and then i'll go to resource bundle under test i'll create another folder i'll just right click click on new and then click on directory and over here i'll just enter resources over here as you can see 
and I'll press enter on my machine. Now under resources, we will try to put the drivers. And uh, for that, what I'll do is I'll just right click and create a directory and over here I'll just add drivers so that our drivers are maintained properly over here under the resources folder all right now our folder structure is created which looks good to us uh, we are ready to start with automation as such but uh, let's proceed with understanding the next step which is um, uh, adding the chrome web driver in the project okay so this is important that the chrome driver also gets uh, installed and added in our project so that we will be able to use this chrome web driver to launch our browser and then navigate through the um, application as such okay now we will proceed with installing the chrome web driver in the project now for this uh, it is very important to know which um, uh, version of Google Chrome you are really using. So what I'll do is I'll go to a tab of Google Chrome and I'll just uh, check over here in the three dots and then I'll go to help and then I'll just click on go about Google Chrome and currently it's a version of 114 which is a version of the Google Chrome in this machine. Now hence it is important that I install Chrome Chrome web driver which is a version of 114 okay now what I will search is over here as uh, Google Chrome driver 114 download so I just click on that web driver for Chrome downloads and then over here is the latest version which is Chrome driver 114 I'll just click on that and after that I'll just click on this particular chrome driver underscore win32.zip folder and the moment I do that you can see that the download has got completed now it might have got installed in the downloads folder it might have got downloaded in the downloads folder so what I'll do is I'll go to downloads folder and search for this all right so I reached uh, downloads folder in my machine and I just searched for Chrome driver and as you can see that the Chrome driver has been downloaded over here I'll just right click and probably extract all and then extract this particular um, Chrome driver and you can see that there is a Chrome driver application over here I'll just copy this and after that I'll go back to my project and if you notice what we had done previously was we had created a folder called drivers over here and uh, I will paste my driver into this um, uh, this folder for that what I'll do is I'll go to this particular path which is C drive users ace AU idea projects selenium cucumber test all right so I'll just go into C drive and then I'll go to users, I'll go to ACAU and after that I'll go to idea projects over here I'll look for my project and then go to source test folder under resources there is a drivers folder I'll just paste this driver over there the moment I do that uh, I can come back to this particular project and you can see that the chrome driver.exe has come over here so our chrome driver has got added in the project okay now how do we use this chrome driver now chrome driver will be used to perform the launching of the browser navigation through the application as such uh, now what we'll be doing is we will be going to utilities uh, folder okay so i'll go to java and there is folder as such and then i'll click on utility and over here uh, under utility I'll create a browser dot Java uh, file as such. so I'll just right click and I'll just click on new and then I'll select Java class and over here I'll create a class which is browser driver and then press enter on my machine so what happens over here is browser driver class has got created now it is important what we enter in this browser 
class as such okay so over here i will create a variable which is public static web driver and uh, when i'm uh, typing over here as web driver you can see that the selenium uh, there is a web driver which is getting imported from selenium so the moment i click on that you can see that it's importing from selenium message it's picking up from selenium library and then i'll just type over here as driver and end with the statement with a semicolon now apart from that uh, what i will do is i'll create a constructor browser driver and then i'll just open up and close a bracket and over here i'll use this parameter and then dot dot driver equal to driver and then close my statement over here so what i'm really doing here is with the constructor i'm already instantiating my driver in such a way that it's getting the values when the class is being called so the moment the class is getting called the constructor is getting called and the driver is getting initiated all right now after that what we will be doing is all right now in browser driver method we will enter the system property and we will just type here a system and dot so there is a method that's coming out set property so we'll just select that set property and with the set property if i hover on top of set property you can see that there are a couple of um, uh, parameters that it's taking one is key and another is value so we need to pass a key over here and the key will be a web driver dot um, chrome dot driver and then the uh, this is the key which we need to specify in the set property and apart from that we need to um give the value over here okay so the value will be system dot get property and get property has a single parameter over here and that needs to be a string key which is specifically user dot dir and we will concatenate this with the path where exactly the chrome driver is placed okay so the chrome driver is placed with source and after that it is under test then it's under resources then under it is drivers and then it is chrome driver dot exe okay so i pass this parameter and then i will close this statement all right now um, this is required because we need to specify the system where exactly the chrome driver is otherwise what will really happen is we will not be able to identify where exactly the chrome driver is placed in our machine now we need to specify as this dot driver equal to new chrome driver and then we'll let end the statement so uh, what we are uh, specifying is that the driver we are um, uh, instantiating the chrome driver as such and we will provide one more method which is public void and we'll specify as close we will be closing the driver over here so this will be this dot driver dot close which will specifically be used closing okay so we are uh, we have entered a couple of methods in our uh, class of browser driver uh, one is the browser driver itself which is the constructor now we are instantiating the driver over here in this particular method and we are specifying the system dot set property and we have created another um, uh, method which is closing the driver okay now this is good enough to start with uh, apart from that what we need to do is we need to now set up a runner file now as we know that in the previous uh, section what we did is we had created a folder over here which is a runner 
and in this runner file we need to specify certain parameters of cucumber class okay so what i will do is i'll just right click and create a java class and over here i'll just add this as test runner file and then press enter so what really has happened is i i'm creating the uh, test runner class as such okay and I'll just add a annotation over here, which is run with. And then we'll specify here as Cucumber class. That class. And then we will specify uh, at the rate one more annotation which is cucumber options and over here we'll specify features and we will give cucumber cucumber options over here wherein we are providing the feature details so where are our features exactly going to be placed is under uh, this particular um, folder where which is features so we will provide the feature details in this particular double quotes and then we'll separate it with a comma and then we'll provide one more parameter which is glue and then open and close bracket and we have to specify the step definition over here and the utility okay so this is where we are providing the details of um, step definition so the path that we have is source test java and then there is step definition provided over here and please note that the spelling has to be exactly correct of the folder that we have and we'll provide the utility as well so it's under Java and then utility and we need to provide the plugin details as well okay so we'll provide plugin equal to open and close the bracket pretty So here is where our uh, reports will be created. So I'll just provide the details of the Cucumber report. So what we have done is we have moved the run with as well as cucumber options out of the uh, method of test runner and then what we'll be using is uh, we'll be hovering on top of uh, cucumber and then search for dependency all right now uh, at the rate run with that's one of the annotation that we had to uh, write and the and uh, another annotation was uh, cucumber options now what we did is we entered three parameters over here features glue and plugin and features is under um, a particular folder which we had to define the path from source then test and then java and after that features as such and please note this uh, the spelling has to be exactly correct uh, we it, it is pretty important and then we in the glue parameter we entered a couple of um, values over here which is step definition and the utility so so the step definition path also has been provided which is source then test java and then step definition as such and uh, there is a uh, utility uh, provided uh, utility path provided as well in our glue related parameter after that we provided the plugin which is pretty and then we provided this particular um, path where the HTML report will get created for the cucumber and in run with we entered the cucumber dot class wherein it was imported from cucumber API JUnit 
cucumber and their uh, cucumber options as well we imported over here now we will try to run the test runner file before that it is very important that we uh, add the cucumber jvm as well as the cucumber j unit with the same version now what i will do is i'll go to pom.xml and then i'll just verify that uh, the cucumber options now the cucumber java option over here there is a dependency that i had added that was of 7.0.0 uh, cucumber java and then there is a cucumber j unit now i what i've done is i've replaced this with a version of 1.2.5 and i'll just verify this is a cucumber j unit and there is a, J a cucumber java over here as well okay so uh, this is coming from info.cux uh, which is a group id and uh, i have provided the same version of 1.2.5 uh, which is a cucumber j unit please make sure that this is the same version uh, and it's in sync uh, after that you have to load the maven project as well so that this gets uh, properly loaded and uh, indexed, indexed as well. Now after that, we will come to test runner. And with the test runner, there is a play button over here, uh, which runs the test. Now please note that there are no features added. There are no def definitions. There are no uh, pages added as well. There are no tests, okay? This is just an empty test, but just we want to check whether the test runner is working fine or not. So what I will do is I'll just click on this particular button and then click on run test. And the test runner should run. And yes, now what it is showing is no features found at source test Java features. Okay, so because the features is empty, that's the reason it has shown that none of the test has run and the, there are zero scenarios and zero steps. But at least this concluded that our test runner file is working fine. Now, what we really want to do is we have to add features, we have to add pages, we have to add step definition so that uh, our test runs what it's supposed to do. Now, let's look at our application under test and we will add a couple of tests from that application under test in our uh, test file as well so that it's clear that what we are really testing. All right, so uh, what I will do is I'll open up a Google browser and I'll just look at the application under test. And this is our application under test, which I'll provide the link here as well. Now, this is a, a simple application, uh, a sample application, wherein you, what you can do as a customer is you can click on the hamburger menu and then there are options of home, there is sign-in portal, there is online products. Now, as a sign-in portal, if I click on this, this is what opens up, which is a login page. Okay, so on the login page, there is a username, password. There are a couple of buttons, which is login as well as you can create, you can register you are, uh, as a um, customer. Now, you can enter, just for demonstration purposes, you can enter a particular username which which is specifically a random username and a random password now because this is a sample application we have not put any validations as such you can log in and the moment you log in you will be able to see that you are landing on this particular page when there are three sections over here the uh, one is formal shoes uh, second is sports third is sneakers as such okay now one of the validation is then once you log in onto your page you are able to see at least one of these three categories will put a validation on the formal shoes as such and if i go back on a home page what will really happen is if i click on sign in portal and if i try to navigate to new user register here this is what will open up okay so user registration page will open up so there are two scenarios two test cases which we will try to build uh, from scratch which will depict what validations we are going to do now if you notice uh, there are um, uh, some of the validations of uh, some of the navigations over here on both the scenarios of login button as well as uh, 
registration pa login page as well as registration page is once the customer clicks on the hamburger menu that is a common step if you click on sign in portal that is also common step and um, uh, you are able to see these buttons uh, that is also common step but from here the first test case is if you are entering something on your username and password and clicking on login then you are able to see formal shoes and um, if you are clicking on the new user register button you are able to click uh, view on the user registration page so there are two test cases which are having common steps now there is a concept of page object model in uh, coding languages or selenium java we'll be touching base on page object model concept as well but before that what we will be doing is we'll create couple of feature files and then we will create some step definition as well and after that we will be looking at the pages as well all right so i'll just minimize this particular application and what i'll do is i'll create couple of features over here i'll just right click and then i'll select as new and i'll just select as page and over here I'll just add over here as logged in user dot feature and once I press enter you can see over here there is an icon coming which is a cucumber file now this is a cucumber file uh, which is a feature file and another feature which I'll create is right click on the feature file uh, feature button uh, feature folder right click select new and then I'll select as file and over here new user dot feature press enter and as you can see there are a couple of uh, um, cucumber files that has been created or feature files are being created now what we'll be doing is we will be entering the details in the feature file now I'll add the details of the feature file which is feature logged in user view and I'll specify the scenario which is validate user is able to view after log Again. and I'll enter the given when then statements so how the cucumber really works is a BDD approach which is a behavior driven approach now the concept of uh, given when then is from a behavior perspective given a user performs a scenario when he performs another scenario then this is supposed to happen so given so here what i have done is i have entered a scenario wherein validate user is able to view after login so there are three statements over here given when then so user navigates to login page when user successfully enters the login details then user should be able to view the product category page all right so we are pretty clear what will really happen in a scenario so given given a user navigates to login page so what happens is if user clicks on the hamburger menu and then clicks on sign in portal he is on the login page user successfully enters the login page a login detail so he is able to enter something on the username and password and then clicks on login then user should be able to view this page this is the first criteria or the first test case that we will be looking at to automate for this what we will be doing is for we have to come to step definition and over here i'll just right click and then create a java class now this class has to be base page and i'll just press enter over here and after this one 
what really happens is at the rate it is important that at the rate now it is important that uh, we enter the details of the given when then now i realized that i made a slight mistake over here now uh, this is supposed to be under logged in user so i'll just copy this if in fact cut from here and go into logged in user and then paste it over here and the new user i'll specify the feature file as well new user i'll specify the scenario details as well so which will be very similar to this one so this one is a feature wherein it's a new user view validated user new user is able to view after clicking on registration so user so this is the this is going to be common step wherein given user navigates to login page user successfully so this particular statement of when will be changing user clicks on new registration button then user should be able to view the registration page all right so my both the features are ready that is a login logged in user as well as new user dot feature now coming back to my base class it is important base page which is a step definition it is very important that these statements are already defined okay so what i'll do is i'll just copy this particular statement and then come to base class and over here what i'll do is i'll just enter the annotation of given the moment i do that you can see that uh, it has taken an import from cucumber java given and then i'll open up um, double quotes over here and then type the statement of user navigates to the login page i'll just open and close the curly brackets all right now i just wanted to give a quick introduction to what's a bdd framework now bdd framework that is behavior driven development approach allows the testers and the business analysts to create test cases in simple test language generally english and behavior driven development is a agile software development methodology in which an application is documented and designed around the behaviors a user expects to experience when interacting with it bdd also offers the ability to enlarge the pool of input and feedback to include business stakeholders and end users who may have little software development knowledge due to this expanded feedback loop development teams may more readily use bdd in continuous integration and continuous delivery environments now there is a given when then formula it's a template intended to guide the writing of acceptance test for a user story given some context when some action is carried out then a particular set of observable consequences should obtain now tools such as cucumber encourage using of this template though it is, it can also be purely as heuristic irrespective of any tool now in our example in the project what we have done is we have created four folders as such one is features second is uh, step definition third is pages and fourth is utility now our given when then um, statements will be stored in the features but when we use those given when then ideally those will be mapped with step definition and those step definition will really contain the operations like um, uh, clicking and where the user is really navigating as a technical term and pages is where we will uh, design all the pages and the objects and methods as such which will be covering trying to understand during the page object model concept and utility is where our browser driver will get stored and any operation related to browser driver will be stored in the utility as such all right 
Now let's proceed to page object model concept so that we understand what really is page object model, why really we will require to understand about page object model and why really we will require to implement in our automation framework as such. All right, now I wanted to touch base of concept related to page object model as well. Now, before we start creating pages, I just wanted to give a quick understanding about that. Now, page object model is an approach to script maintenance and uh, it is to create separate class file which would find elements, fill them or verify them. This class can be reused in all the scripts using that element. In future, if there are changes to the web elements, we need to make changes in just one class file and not 10 different scripts. This approach is called as page object model, which is POM. A POM which is little different from Maven POM as such. This is page object and that is project object. Totally different terminologies. But this page object model concept, this helps in code, making code more readable, maintainable and reusable in the future as such. I'll give a classic example. Now, before starting with page object model, you have to understand how many pages am I, my team need needs to automate for our uh, application under test. Now, better to plan it early if you already know. And the example is the example which we were looking at, which is is online shoe portal. Now there is a home page uh, and the home page consists of hamburger menu as well as sign in portal. Now the sign in page is little different. Now sign in page contains username, password, login button, new register as such. And the registration page consists of different objects which are salutation given name last name contact number email address username password submit now how do we really define is home page make let's make home page as a different class sign in page as a different class registration page as a different class okay three different pages three different classes now how we will treat is um, home page will have hamburger menu and sign in portal couple of objects over there and we will make this treat this as objects okay now sign in page has uh, four different um, objects wherein username password login button new register we will make this as objects and registration page has different uh, parameters okay different uh, objects as such so we will treat this as a different objects of different classes and this will definitely help us during reusability. Home page, because we made this as um, hamburger menu as and sign in portal as different objects, we will perform click on hamburger menu. Okay, so that's the operation that we are performing on that object. Sign in portal, we are going to perform a click on that as a operation on the sign in portal. In the sign in page, because it's a different class altogether, username we will use as a send keys. Okay, something which we are entering into a text box, we will perform a send keys operation. Password again a send keys because that's going to be a text box. Login button will be a click because we have it's a button, that's why we have to click on that. New register will perform a click on that. So this is what this is what is concept of the page object model which we will be implementing in our project as such. All right, now after looking at the page object model concept, what we'll be doing is we'll be creating some pages. Now for that, what we'll be doing is we'll go to this particular folder which is pages. I'll just right click here. I'll select new and then I'll click on Java class. And over here, I'll create the class which is home page and then press enter on my keyboard once I do that you can see that the home page class is created similar to what we were showing on the uh, home page class okay now on the home page plus what we will be really selecting is the objects on this particular home page all right now what we have to do is we have to look at this particular object which is a hamburger menu the moment we click it this particular widget opens up okay after that the user needs to click on the sign in portal 
all right now when they click on the sign in portal that also come has to come on the home page all right now let's do one thing let's capture the properties of these elements so when i say properties is a web element property so this is a hamburger menu and under hamburger menu we have to capture a unique property for this hamburger menu so that it gets identified in our automation script all right now I'll give a shortcut method how to identify the properties of the web element. What for that what we need to do is we need to click on this dot over here and then we have to select as more tools and then go to developer tools and there is a shortcut. You can see control shift I. Okay. So we have to go to the developer tools and the moment we do that you can see that the, this particular development tool uh, opens up now this is under google chrome uh, of course if you if you are using a different browser altogether the identification of those web elements can be performed with a similar fashion uh, which we are doing through dev tools in the chrome all right, now we have to identify this particular hamburger menu, uh, web element properties. Now I'll just click on this particular uh, inspect element tag, and then I'll select as hamburger menu. And this is the checkbox, or this is the input, uh, which is the element within our uh, page. And I'll just right click, and I'll just go to copy and then I'll copy the X path for this particular element. All right. Now, once I copy the X path, what I'll do is I'll come back to this uh, class file over here and then I'll add that element, which is public static. And then I'll declare a string and then I will enter here as hamburger underscore menu underscore x path and i'll enter the uh, details of this particular x path which is this and then i'll end the statement so what i've really done is i have captured the x path of this element of the hamburger menu similar fashion what i'll do is i'll look for this particular element which is sign in portal okay so i'll just inspect element of sign in portal i'll i have found this element here i'll just right click i'll just copy I'll go to copy X path and the similar fashion, I'll enter the public static string. And because this is a sign in portal, what I'll be doing is sign in. And then this is a link. So I'll just type over here as link and then X path equal to with the double quotes. And I'll pass on the X path over here of sign in link. Okay. So both the elements are captured over here and uh, what we really want to do is we need to specifically perform an operation on these elements. Okay, so we were looking at the previous uh, step wherein we were performing the uh, action on the or perform uh, operations or actions on these particular elements. Now for that what I'll do is I'll just create a method static void and this will be click underscore hamburger menu and then after that uh, i'll just add uh, driver dot find element and within this find end element i have to pass in a parameter which is by x path and uh, what x path is expecting is a string which is a X path um, expression. Okay, so I have already captured the hamburger menu X path over here on top. So I'll use that. And what I will type here is hamburger menu X path. And then I'll perform an operation on this. Okay, so what operation I'll be performing is a click and I'll end the statement. Now, before this click is happening, what I'll do is I will add some sleep over here. So what I'll add here is thread dot sleep and let it be for two seconds and i'll just end the statement so i'll just hover on top of this and i'll just change this to thread dot sleep as such okay all right so i'll just remove this and i'll add an exception as well which is un in 
which is interrupted exception okay so in case the interruption happens during this time we'll get an exception over there all right so i have performed the click operation of a hamburger menu what i will do now is uh, i'll perform a click operation of a sign in link xpath as well okay so i'll just add public static void and then i'll add similar to what i have done for the hamburger menu okay so click underscore sign in link and then xpath okay so it will be click underscore sign in and then it's a link so i'll just add link over here and make it as a method all right inside the method i what i will do is similar to what i have done above which is driver dot find element by xpath and then i'll pass the parameters over here of the sign in link and then i'll perform a operation over here and i'll add a thread dot sleep as well for here uh, of 2 seconds as well so i'll just add that and in my statement all right and let me add this exception as well which is being requested by the method all right so my home page is ready and uh, home page uh, contains two elements i had as i had shown in the page object model concept that it contained two um, elements which we wanted to perform an operation one was hamburger menu another was sign in portal sorry sign in link and we are performing the click operation on both of them and we have captured two methods as well over here so our home page is done okay now what we need to do is we need to create different classes for different pages in the application so what i have done here if you notice is i have created different pages now there is a home page there is a product category page registration page and i sign in page okay so if i open the application again so how did we categorize with our scenarios was that this will be the home page so i have captured the two elements which were the um, hamburger menu as well as the sign in portal and i have captured both operations on this page and in the subsequent pages right which is a registration page and sign in page so even if you click on the sign in portal link you will be able to come on this page which is a sign in page okay so i will not show in the details of it but what i will quickly show is how i have really designed these pages so that you can really capture in your project as well in similar fashion so sim in simple manner what we have to do is we have to create right click on this pages uh, page folder and then uh, select new and then create uh, select the java class and you have to name the uh, page in such a way that it's very understandable to whoever looks at your code automation scripts they will be able to understand okay this is what the home page is this is what is the sign in page this is what is the registration page and this is what is a product category page okay so this is the second page we will be landing on like the test scenario wise and i'll show you how i have created the sign in page you can create on your own but this is for just for helping you how, how this can be designed and i'll just show what i've written is i have captured four elements over here one is a username text xpath okay so this is the text text box xpath which i have captured over here and the password is this element so username is this element password is this element login button is this element and uh, uh, registration button is this element which is new user register here okay so for all four elements are captured and apart from that what i have really done is i have created four methods over here okay so each element is uh, performing an um, uh, operation and what operation we are really perform is we are entering something here as in the username text and uh, what i'll be doing is i'll be performing the operation of send keys so whenever there is a text box what operation you will be performing is a uh, send keys and i am passing some parameters over here which is sa just for demonstration purpose i'm just writing something over there i'm passing into the username and in password similar fashion because it's a text box i'm doing the same thing okay so i'm writing the send keys and then uh, uh, i'm passing the parameters of the uh, password over here and 
on the login button so because it's a button what i have to perform is a click operation and new registration is over here which is a button over here and uh, uh, i will be performing a click operation over here okay so this page uh, contains the four elements that we were looking for and it's performing the operations also on those four elements on the sign in page now what happens is in the uh, first scenario is logged in user okay so if a user really enters the details of um, the username and password and clicks on login what he really does is he lands on this page and this page contains some product categories okay so what i have done is for our uh, testing purpose what i have done is i created a product category page as well and over here what i have captured is the product category heading path okay so what i am doing is over here i am just capturing this element and I'm storing it in a string, the XPath itself, and I'm just verifying, okay, visibility is something that uh, um, I just want to make it uh, check whether uh, the product category is really present there or not. So this is the visibility, I'm just capturing the this particular element, okay, um, and I'll just remove this because I'm already capturing it in a product uh, category uh, xpath and I, I will be storing this in a particular um, uh, element or a boolean as such whether it's really visible and then we will uh, verify whether it's true or not okay so if it's present we will be able to identify okay this particular xpath is really present this particular element is really pre present on the element uh, on the web page but if it is not present it will turn out to be false statement okay so this is how we will capture in the product category and if we go to registration page okay so on the registration page what i have really done is i have really uh, looked for uh, this particular xpath which is registration heading xpath so if i go back and if i am not logging as a user and i want to register myself I'll be landing on this page, which which is user registration page. Okay, so what I've done is I've captured the X path of this particular element, and I've captured it over here, and then I'm getting the uh, get text. Okay, so I'm storing it in the uh, uh, a particular string, and then um, uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to compare it whether it's a user registration page is really visible or not. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to do i can probably put that parameter in the product category page i'll i'll show that as well uh, as we go okay so this is how the pages are created so i've created four pages over here which will uh, categorize and cover my uh, two test cases and two scenarios that i'm really going to test so this is how we capture the pages as such all right now we have looked at these folders uh, structure previously when we were looking at the cucumber test now we looked at how to create features we looked at how to create uh, pages we looked at the page object model concept as well now what we are uh, still have to still need to create is step definitions now what's a step definition step definition in cucumber is a method which with an expression that links to one or more jerk in steps now when cucumber executes a jerk in step in a scenario it will look for a matching step definition to execute now that's the definition of step definitions now what really happens is features as you can see if i go back to the project features are something that we had um, written already that is uh, something like this which is okay logged in user dot feature then new user dot feature these are jerk in steps okay so these are jerk in language as such now if we want to create uh, a sequence of these jerk in steps to be linked to a method what we need to create is step definition so that's what is missing currently in our uh, project which we will add now uh, in the step definition okay so let me proceed with that in the step definition folder what we have to do is we have to right click and then select as new and then we have to create the java class now the java class that we create can be a synonymous one like a very equivalent to the pages that we have similar to that so that it can be maintained easily now what I will do is I'll create some step definitions and I'll request you to just follow those steps 
doing the step definition creation as such. Alright, so what I have done is I have created some step definitions over here. You can see there is a base page, there is a sign in page, and there is a product category page. Now, the sign in page that I have created, right, uh, I'll go to the base page first. Now, what I have really done here is I have created a class which is a base page, it's a Java class, and it's a given method, and this given method is exactly same as what we had done uh, we had in our feature file okay so in the our feature file what the first step was user navigates to the login page all right now user will navigate to the login page how he will navigate to the login page is he will have to click on the uh, hamburger menu and he will have to click on the sign in link only then he'll come to the login page okay so this is how we define the methods now if you notice this method is something which we had created in our pages okay so this method we had created in pages and what we are doing is we are importing the home page over here in this step definitions so if i click on this hamburger menu what it's doing is is going back to the page that we had created previously which was a home page okay so this is how we create the step definition we have to create the step definition is such a way that there is a given method it's a given annotation and please note that the annotation uh, when we add this annotation what it really does is it imports from the cucumber library and this cucumber library is cucumber.api.java.en.given okay now this is what it has imported from given as a given method and we are able to add this annotation and under this there is a method that we have which is user navigates to login page okay now we have added this method and inside that we are calling the page objects or page methods page object methods so that it clicks on the hamburger menu at different um, uh, web elements as such okay similarly what i have done is i have created another step definition which is sign in page now sign in page is a class file now class file uh, is when uh, we have added a when annotation now at the rate when user successfully enters a login details okay now how does a login detail really happen uh, we are doing the send keys username similar to what and this method is calling the pages on the sign in page now send keys underscore username so if i click on this particular method it calls the method inside the sign in page.com uh, sign in page.java file which we had created previously okay so if i go back to sign in page send keys we are entering the username we are entering the password and we are clicking on the login button this is what we are doing on user successfully enters a login page and the product category page what we are really doing is in the product category page we are supposed to check whether uh, we are able to verify we are landing on the product category page once we have uh, really uh, logged in into the uh, web page as such okay so here here i'll add the steps and i'll show you how, how i am doing it Now in the then uh, annotation, generally what we add is the asserts. Now assert is a statement where we have to verify whether um, uh, our condition is true or false. And this is where we are adding the real test. Now in the visibility at the product category, what we are really doing is product category, we are uh, storing it in a string. We can store it in a string, which is the actual product category. And here the product category will extract the text from this one. Okay, so I'll just go and then get text. And we are storing it in a string. And once this is um, stored in the string, what we really do is we return this. So I'll have to add static string. And then I'll add a return statement here. And I'll go back to my step definition. I 
I'll add a assert statement here. Assert dot. Now the moment I do that, you can see that the assert has not been added as a library. Now what I'll do is I'll add the library over here. Assert equals. I'll import the static method from here, which is uh, J unit. I'll just add. And the first product category we had was formal shoes. I'll just end the statement. And I'll add the re uh, registration page as well. So I'll just right click. I'll just select as new. And over here, I'll just add a registration page. And similar to the product category, I'll just copy these. I'll just add it over here as this particular line. And then I'll just change the method. User should be able to view the registration scope page. So assert he equals will be changed over here for the actual registration page heading as user registration page. All right. Now our step definition looks good. All the four pages have been entered over here and all the feature file uh, jerking line steps are also linked with the step definition. So this is how we create the step definition files. All right, now after looking at the step definition part of uh, our code, what we have been looking or we have not looked is from utility perspective. Okay, now what is this uh, folder which is utility? Now utility contains or should probably contain couple of uh, folders which is browser driver and hooks. Now the reason I created this particular folder which is browser driver is sometimes what happens is there are multiple browsers that we have to test it could be google chrome or it could be firefox and based on that whatever parameters gets entered by the user or the automation tester he or she has to make sure that the browser driver is instantiated or initialized properly and that heavy lifting is done by the browser driver folder now what is the important parameter over here is hooks now what is this hooks you may ask now hooks in cucumber is very important and by definition cucumber supports hooks which are blocks of code that are run before or after each scenario you can define them anywhere in your project or step definition layers using the method of at the rate before and at the rate after cucumber hooks allows us to better manage the code workflow and helps us to reduce the code redundancy we can always this we can say that it is an unseen step which allows us to perform our scenarios or tests as such all right now let's create this hook file and what i want to specifically say that um, if we go back to our folder uh, or the project as such what we need to do is we need to right click and click on new and then we have to select a java class which is hooks.java or hooks.java class file as such okay now once we create that which i have already done in my case is that uh, i have created a hooks file already and what i am doing in my hooks file is i have added a couple of annotations over here which is at the rate before and at the rate after so as i have shown in the definition what re really at the rate before does is it will be run before the test case actually gets performed okay so before the test step itself gets performed what will really happen is this particular method will be called which is setup okay so this setup method will call the browser driver and i have modified the browser driver class little bit and which i'll explain uh, soon what i have really modified in my browser driver 
before that what i want to show is this particular annotation which is at the rate after now what i really want to do is after my test case is completed or test script is completed that is the first test script this tear down will be called which is driver will be closed so uh, if you really observe what's happening is at the rate before will initialize a new browser driver and at the rate after will close the uh, browser as such or the driver as such okay this is what what i want to specifically do and as shown in the definition this is very important when you do a code reusability now imagine there are 25 test scripts or 30 test, test scripts as such and test cases what we will really require to do is we need to initialize with a new browser and then close the uh, new browser uh, close the browser after the test is performed before the second test case is run so this is kind of helps in the code reusability as well okay i'll go to the browser driver class now and i have little bit modified this browser driver and I, I will explain this step by step what this browser driver really does is it creates some chrome options over here i have added a couple of options a uh, couple of um, uh, variables which is driver as well as options now this browser driver has an option equal to new chrome options this is important when we have we are passing certain information related to chrome options or the chrome um, browser as such and the options that we are passing is an add uh, argument which is a remote allow origins this is required in some cases i have added in this case as such and system dot set property now system dot set property i have already explained previously that it gives the details of certain key value parameters and in this case what i am uh, uh, passing on is a system dot set property which is a web driver dot http dot factory and there is a value which is jdk http client now this i have added because i was encountering an error now if you are not encountering an error while running your test case this is not really required now um, the line number 16 is a systems dot set property which we already had checked previously this is where we have to give the path of where exactly our chrome driver is in our system whole project assets so this path we are providing and this dot driver we are initializing the driver as such and the chrome driver is being passed okay now driver dot get what it really does is it launches the browser now uh, this is our application under test and this is what gets launched and the heavy lifting is being taken by the browser driver now as soon as uh, hooks is called so every time you run uh, your test files what will really happen is your browser driver will be called and browser driver is what is doing your heavy lifting in this case it is initializing the chrome driver it is opening the application uh, that's what it do is doing and after that the step definitions will be called one by one all right so this is what happens with the uh, browser driver and as well as hooks in this case now our project is all set we have added the features we have added the pages we have added the runner file we have added the step definition files and we have added the uh, utility files as well now in the test runner file i'll just look at the test runner file i have modified certain parameters like features as you can see it is a path where exactly the feature is i have modified little bit with the step definition what i have done is i have uh, removed the path leading to step definition i can really give the step definition over here which is the folder uh, uh, the folder name as such and i have provided the utility folder name that's what you can see over here i give the utility as well and i have given a plugin okay so this is a pretty uh, a plugin uh, which generates the html report which is not that great i'll show you how it really looks like the cucumber uh, report as well which is a very plain basic cucumber uh, report but we'll be looking at um, advanced report as well now what what i really wanted to show is i'll just run the test runner file okay for that what i need to do if i have to run the test runner file i have to select the test runner file somewhere here okay now if you are not able to see the test runner file here what you can really do is you you can go to this run uh, button over here on the top 
corner and then you can click on the edit configurations and over here you can add a j unit so what you can do is you can click on new add new configuration uh, what i have done is i have created a j unit runner file and then i have added the test runner over here now this should get auto detected if you are not able to see this uh, what i would suggest is kindly look at this particular uh, field wherein you are able to see the java sdk uh, you are able to see the parameters of hyphen ea then the class and the class should lead to runner dot test runner okay this is where it is it should lo uh, lead you to now if you are not able to see this particular runner dot test runner what you need to do is you need to click and then you need to search it in your project okay you can go to this particular source main java and uh, you can go to source test java and then you can go to runner and then select this and get it added over here as soon as this gets added you are good to go with your running of the test okay now i'll go here i'll just run the test runner file i i'll click on play button and the moment I do that, you can see that the Chrome is getting being controlled by automated soft, test software. What it means really is that uh, I, it's not a human intervention. It is uh, it is getting triggered by the automation scripts itself. And as soon as you can see that the tests have also run over here in the runner file and there are six tests. Now you can see there are a couple of uh, uh, feature files. One is logged in user view and another is new user view. Okay, so if the logged in user, there were three steps that we had and new user, there were three steps that we had added. So there are total six steps and that's what you can see over here. The test steps have passed six um uh, six test case which has passed six tests which have passed all right now what i can do i can go to my file under target now the reason i'm doing that is you can see that the path that i had given over here is target um uh, cucumber html report i'll go here in the target i'll go to cucumber html report and i'll just click on this particular index dot html file now i'll just right click i'll go to open in and then i'll select the browser and i'll select the chrome browser and you can see over here that there are two features that are that are present okay so one is a user navigates to uh, validate user is able to view after login and validate new user is able to view after clicking on the new registration as such so this is our cucumber file which is very basic cucumber file now if we want to change this particular um, um, cucumber file or it we have to make it more prettier we have to change something here which is a plugin all right now what i wanted to show my students is that uh, this whole project has been uploaded into github and uh, i'll just provide the link over here as well in case you find any issues kindly just have a look at the uh, github link as well the same code has been uploaded over here and a little bit readme document has been provided what are the scenarios that we have and you can go and look at the project structure as well in this um, uh, github and in in case you want to clone it into your machine you can go ahead and clone it in your uh, machine as well just to give an idea that this is how uh, uh, this has been designed as such and exact code which i have gone through this whole video has been uploaded over here so you can just go through uh, the steps over here as well just go to the test steps and then look at the feature files as well as uh, you can look at the step definitions runner files pages utility folder as well all have been the working code has been uploaded into github for your convenience all right thanks for staying staying tuned and happy coding and happy automation testing thank you very much